So, Sarah, we were out in the boat today uh, taking water samples, and we saw you coming in with Jen. So, uh, what brought you to this island, other than the boat? Well, Ken, uh, we've come to do a bit of uh, ground referencing. So, uh, essentially, my job is to process a remotely sensed image, a satellite image of One Tree Island and the surrounding reef, and um, we are doing the field work here to support that image processing. So essentially trying to establish a link between what's on the sea floor, be it sand, algae, coral, seagrass, and the reflectance properties of it, an image that we've bought of the island. So do you think uh, people can figure out ecological zonations from looking at satellite imagery? Certainly, yeah. Uh, so uh, it's fairly well established that um, different geomorphological zones on, on reef platforms have a very distinctive uh, coral reef communities associated with them. And uh, just as when we look at things like a seagrass bed, we see a difference between that seagrass bed and the matrix of sand that it's sitting on. Um, you can pick those differences up on a satellite image and, and use that as the basis of uh, distinguishing the two on a map. And so can you just take the satellite image and infer what's on the ground, or do you actually have to do some work first to uh, understand how the what the satellite sees relates to what's actually in place? Uh, there's a lot of pre-processing that goes on with these images, so you can't uh, necessarily just run uh, a, a standard classification algorithm on them, if you like, which is something that we use to make the map from, in, from the image. Um, so you have to correct for the effects of the atmosphere. If there's glint on the water surface and you're trying to map something underneath the water surface, then you have to correct for that. And then just as light gets scattered in the atmosphere, it also gets scattered in the water column. So you have to, again, correct for that. So there's kind of a big lead up um, bit of work in terms of organizing the image in such a way that you can actually work with it. And then once you've got that, you then have to support what you do with the image um, with a big field data set as well. So, uh, yeah, so it's great that somebody else is doing this kind of work because a lot of our work is in boats and very small scale and this sort of satellite imagery I think should help us be able to get a better fix on what's going on at larger spatial scales. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, the main challenge for us, we've got five days and we're hoping to visit quite a spatially extensive area, if you like, of the reef system. We're hoping to work in the lagoon in the second lagoon, get into the third lagoon if it's possible, and get outside the reef as well. Um, so really, we're, we're hoping to cover quite a large area and get a, a diverse range of samples. And so what's your home institution? My home institution is the University of Wollongong, which is uh, just south of Sydney in New South Wales. Uh, I've been there since January, and uh, this is my first Australian research, so I'm pretty excited about it. Well, we think it's great that you're here also. So thank you for being here and that's today's video diary. Thank you very much.